Hello friends, it's Nikki. Thanks for coming back to the channel. And if you're new here, then go ahead and subscribe because I've gotten a lot of new subscribers and I want to say thank you so much for supporting my channel and watching my videos. And these Missy Parson videos have really been um, interesting to cover and challenging to me and I'm happy to be able to share these. Uh, with you and maybe we can bring some closure some families or bring some of these people home so I just want to say thank y'all to everybody who started subscribing and um, I really really appreciate it so today we are going to be talking about Tyler Davis he has gotten some coverage he actually went missing on February 24th of 2019 so we are coming up on a year almost um, 11 months it's been that he's been gone and it is a really another sad case but I think it's one that my Ohio friends out there um, could really probably help out if you're around the Ohio area even if you're not though this is a really interesting case and of course there's always a lesson that can be taken from most of these missing persons cases that I cover I noticed there's a lesson to be learned and so let's get right into Tyler Davis's um, case also there is some updated information that is really very interesting that came out in October I actually just caught it the other day I was like oh wow so it's pretty uh, some pretty kind of positive um, information that they have now so anyways so Tyler Davis is 29 year old male who actually lives in Wilmington Ohio but he went missing from Columbus Ohio um, Tyler is just a young guy starting his family out fairly newly married to Brittany that have a young son um, basically he was a baby when he disappeared so um, and they just work jobs they don't they're not big party animals they don't do dr I mean they're just normal average trying to work and build a life for themselves and for their son and uh, this happens and really has wrecked Brittany's life on the 23rd of February of 2019 it was Brittany's birthday and so they have been making plans because they both work a lot uh, actually Tyler apparently works 10 12 hour days uh, at a fast food restaurant or some restaurant management okay and if any of y'all have worked in management or in fast food or in food in general um, that is a hardcore job that you rarely get a weekend off so apparently they plan this weekend uh, in advance and <clears throat> it was just gonna be a little her birthday party weekend and stuff and um, so on the 23rd the day before he went missing him and Brittany drive to his parents and drop their baby off because they they're gonna watch him for the weekend they head from Wilmington to Columbus which is a little over an hour drive there and they get to Columbus and they check into the Easton Hilton Hotel which is really really nice I got pictures of it super nice hotel they are really she's being spoiled on her birthday uh, the next day they're planning on doing a couple's massage I mean just a really just having a spoiled birthday you know when they get to the um, hotel they chillax they just relax for a little while um, they want to meet some friends to go out to these bars but only one friend ends up going they chill like I said then the friend meets them at the hotel um, and about 8 30 9 o'clock they leave to go out to go bar hopping the eastern area this little eastern square town center has all kinds of stuff uh, to do in it it's you know the hub a tourist hub basically like in Columbus so they take an Uber which see they're being really responsible um, because they actually call Uber they don't drive they call an Uber to go to these bars so super responsible I'm very proud about that <laughs> first bar they go to is Bar Louie and Tyler doesn't have I think she says he has one drink now they have Brittany has all of this 
on record because they, you know, swiped everything. So they, she knows exactly how much they spent, what time they left, and all this stuff. And all, she did about a two-hour interview with True Crime Garage, which is pretty informative, tells you a lot. They go to this bar, Louie, uh, she uh, has a drink or two, and he has one drink, I believe. They leave that bar, they go to another bar called Adobe Gillis, and that is where they have quite a few drinks. Um, he uh, is on a heavy drinker. They're ne neither one of them. They've never even been to a bar together. This is how new they are. They're not drinkers, so um, this is this is a new thing to them. She admittedly uh, says she is drunk. She's drinking and has quite a few drinks. He has quite a few drinks. The friend has quite a few drinks. Everybody's really drunk, having a great time, no issues at all. She's so drunk and happy and having such a great time. She even suggests they go to a strip club, which that's exactly what they do. They take an Uber over to a place called the Dollhouse, which is a um, strip club. They hang out till the strip club closes, literally. Um, she says the lights come on and everything. They, they shut down the bar. So they're pretty intoxicated. Everybody is. Um, at the time, so they call an Uber to get back home, uh, the friend does, on his phone, and they arrive back at the Hilton at 318. She literally, she literally knows what time, the exact time is 318. She says she looked at the, uh, Uber car's <coughs> clock and it's 318, so wow. So this is when things start going seriously, really, really quickly. It's 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 funny how fast things went. So 318, they're getting dropped off. Guess what? The friend is passed out, and so is Tyler. Tyler's in the back seat with Brittany. He's in the front seat. So she wakes up the friend. Hey, we're here, and she's like, "Gosh, we gotta uh, wake him up." Which apparently he's one of those sleepers you don't really want to wake up. But you know, gotta gotta get up. Come on, baby, let's go. Let's get get into the hotel. So she wakes him up, and <clears throat> according to her story, he's confused, disoriented, wondering. He's like, what? What are we doing here? Well, in the more recent um, update in October, the press conference, the cop that's investigating this actually says he's irritated. He's actually kind of feisty and saying, this is our hotel. Why is this Uber driver dropping us off here? And, um, you know, he's not happy about that. He doesn't even think he's at the right hotel. So he's very obviously highly intoxicated. He's really tired. It's um, three o'clock in the morning. So Brittany's like, come on, get out of this car. She says the Uber driver's literally irritated with him. So she gets him out of the car and he's irritated. He's like, okay, I'm going for a walk. I don't know whether he said that. That's not really clear. But he burns off, right? He starts to walk off and she's like, hey, 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 wait. Well, the friend, the friend's like, she's like, ah, my phone is dead. His phone's almost dead too. By the way, everybody's phone's almost dead. They've been out partying all night, probably using their phone, taking pictures, cameras, videos, stuff like that. She's like, hey, hey. So he, the friend goes, hey, uh, don't worry about it. She's like, uh, he says, I'll go get him. So the friend takes off after Tyler. So there, she says she sees them go. Just a quick side note. Um, when they first went out, they got, they checked in the hotel room. They get, they got two key cards, correct, which you usually do. Tyler had one in his wallet, who's walking off, and then the friend has one because Tyler gave him one just in case they got separated at the bar. He could come back to the hotel and crash there if he wanted to. So, super awesome friend, right? Before the friend goes after Tyler to catch him and bring him back to the room, he hands Brittany the card. And he tells her, go ahead, go upstairs, whatever, and <clears throat> charge your phone. Comes back down. Nobody's outside. She's looking all around. Nothing. Nobody. Um, then, all of a sudden, here comes the friend walking back. No Tyler. She's like, what's going on? Where's Tyler? She, he's like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. Uh, he'll be back. You know, he's, he's just walking off. He's coming back around. So in the meantime, she's trying to call him. So finally, at 409, 410, she says, uh, he calls her and he apologizes. He says, hey, I'm sorry. I see the hotel. I'm in the woods. 
but I can see the hotel. I'm sorry. I'll be right there. I'm on my way. I'm walking back. She's like, okay, cool. So she hangs up the phone. They're still waiting there. And then uh, about, she says, a minute later, he calls back. He says, and, and she's like, hello? Nothing. Dead silence. It lasts for just a few seconds, and bam, it's dead. It's nothing. So she, as soon as that happens, she calls him back. Phone goes straight to voicemail. So at this point, we're probably thinking, the phone's dead. His phone died. So, she, and she says she's at like 4%. She's like, oh my gosh. So, <coughs> they start walking around, you know. And I think at this point, the friend is like, whole, you know, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's, okay, I am over this. He is coming back. He just called. Don't worry about it. And, you know, I'm going to go home. He'll be back. And he's leaving her at the hotel. It's not that big of a deal, you know. So she is a little irritated. She says, like, uh, but she's not being stranded. She's at the hotel. And he did just say he was going to be back. So, long story short, he leaves. And he goes home. It's late. He's going to pass out. He's drunk. So he leaves. And she kind of walks around, stands around, wait, no toddler, no toddler. So her phone's dead. So she's like, man, i got to go upstairs trying to charge her phone figure what's going on. It's moving. This this is this is moving right along. She goes back upstairs. She charges her phone. She calls a friend. She doesn't know who to call. She calls somebody, and she's upset. And she's like, I can't believe Tyler walked off, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, the friend is like, chill out. No big deal. Calm down. You just talked to him 15 minutes ago. What's the big deal? It's going on 5 o'clock. So finally she's like, man, I've got to call somebody. Somebody's got to help me find him. I'm all alone. She calls another friend around 5 a.m. to tell him what's going on. She explains what's going on. So he comes. This is like her best man at her wedding. And he lives in Columbus. So he comes to her. Um, and they go and they start walking around. She has been walking around already. Her and the friends start walking around. It's dead. There's nobody in this place. And they, they literally can't find them. Well, she says five, around 7 o'clock in the morning or something. Then people start coming. It's getting packed and stuff. Steadily, she's walking. Finally, um, uh, in the morning, she finally does call his parents. And she's like, oh, my gosh. She's so, she's just so, worse. she's like embarrassed to even call. Like, oh, my gosh. She does. She calls his parents. And, um, she tells them what's going on. Anyways, they, st and they keep, they keep working. Well, finally, she's got to check out of this hotel. So, finally, somebody tells her, look, you need to call the cops. You need to help get somebody to help us find him because we can't. So, she does call them. The cops show up about 1230. <coughs> Basically, the cops tell her, hey, he's 29 years old. He can do whatever he wants. If he wants to walk off and leave, then he can. They literally were not really interested but they did file a missing persons report and they got him in the um, computer. <coughs> they leave, I guess, and so she keeps looking and looking and looking until 5 p.m. and finally she's like, I've got to go back to Wilmington. I've got to get my baby. The weeks, the days go by. She does return uh, with some friends. They return, they look for him, they try to re, re, re uh, trace his steps and all stuff, all kinds of stuff. Finally, the cops do a search for him extensively, extensively on Tuesday, and um, they periodically do. They do dogs. They do just all kinds of stuff. They and they they can't find him. The thing is, they haven't really released any information. They're just like, yeah, we're searching for him. Yeah, we're searching. And she's done all this. Um, publicity herself, hardly anything from the police. So finally in October, they had a press conference and they showed finally, which why in the world would they not just do this? Uh, see, I just don't know why. I know they got to keep things like, you know, secret, private for the investigation and all that good stuff. But anyways, the beginning in October, they have a big press conference and it's like a 45 minute long press conference. I will link it below. And they give, show the pings of his phone, how he walked all around. It has pings. They even release a voice recording where he asked Google or whoever <coughs> to take him back to the Easton Hilton. And that was at 3.51 a.m. 3.51 a.m. So that's the last. So I don't know if he did that. Then he called her, whatever. But between there and there. But he literally walked. <clears throat> and I'm going to post, like, you can see these pictures, 
where he walked all around and I mean he really went for a walk he was very intoxicated and very I don't he got lost what is so sad about this is that there's so it's it's just mind-blowing that he could just go. There's so much or he could have stayed in where the building. Somehow he got out and around to away from the town square area. And they have dogs that have, uh, they hit on the water source. They've made that very clear. Detective has said he got out in his waiters and waited out there and uh it's so deep and it's thick and they're basically he's they've searched it three or four times and they have not found him so you know it is just mind-blowing even the cop is like i don't know what happens you know what happened he can't you know he's not allowed to make assumptions of what happened but um a little bit of common sense will tell you more than likely he he may have fell, he may have, you know, slipped, he may have fell asleep, but I, on my opinion, my opinion only, um, he, he's there somewhere, and, um, I don't believe anybody took him, um, I think he was very intoxicated, and he got really off track big time, and I know Brittany is very devastated and I just feel for because I cannot imagine just being right there at the hotel and just knowing he's right there he's right there you know just you know be still I'll come to you I mean I think the alcohol and then the new area he didn't even know this area it really made things super complicated and very hard for him to stay uh, coherent enough to, and then not having the phone, the phone being a short, it's just very, very sad. And so, if you're in the Easton area, the, of Ohio, that area, there's some marshy parts around there, but I mean, you could keep your eye out for anything, but they have not found the phone, they have not found clothes, they have not found, they literally have found nothing, and it is that and honestly probably the, the best course I don't know if they can even drain that pond I don't, or the swamp I don't know if they can drain the swamp but <clears throat> sadly that is might be his place of rest I don't believe there's any once again I'm not going to be a conspiracy theorist this is not what this channel is all about when it comes to missing people um you know, this is just a tragic disappearance. And then a good lesson learned. As I say, most of my videos, you learn a lesson from one, you know, most of these disappearances. You can learn a really good lesson. And that's kind of, you know, alcohol, you know. I'm not blaming anyone. Once again, I'll never do that. I'm not blaming Tyler or his wife or his friend. They're literally just out having a good time and you know this has happened but since they have this new information maybe 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 some closure will come soon so thank you so much for watching if you're in this area you know keep your eye out for Tyler he may be up walking around he may you know may not be and for Brittany and his friend I don't think you did anything wrong you did the best you could for the circumstances that you have and so, I appreciate y'all watching so much. This has been a, a sad video, but I am very glad that y'all are enjoying these Missing Persons videos. And I hope you share, and you like, and you subscribe, and you come back again for another episode. And I appreciate y'all so, so much. Thank you.